The Dateable Podcast is an insider's look into modern dating that the Huffington Post calls one of the top 10 podcasts about love and sex. On each episode, we'll talk to real daters about everything from sex parties to sex droughts, date fails to diaper fetishes, and first moves to first loves. I'm your host, Yue Xu, former dating coach turned dating sociologist. You'll also hear from my co-host and producer, Julie Kraftchik, as we explore this crazy dateable world. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Dateable, a show all about modern dating, where we dig a little bit deeper than just dating (laughs) stories. We want to get to the bottom of why people behave the way they do, including your own behaviors. This is our second bonus episode while we're still in the off season. So you just got us, but we have a really great episode planned out for you because we're doing predictions, dating predictions for 2021. Who doesn't want just us? Come on. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. I think it was just my own limiting beliefs that people maybe just don't want to hear from us. (laughs) No. (laughs) But yeah, this is going to be really fun. We did this in 2020, one of these prediction episodes. And I think some stuff actually ironically came true. We did Mm. predict more video. Do you remember that? We did predict that. We did not predict COVID. We did not know that video would surge because of COVID. But I think... Nobody predicted COVID. (laughs) That's true. Even Nikki Nova, who we talked to, that's a medium, said that like she would never have predicted COVID in a zillion years. So I will give us some credit that that is one of those things that no one could have predicted. But I'm excited to do our 2021 because we have a little more insight this year. You know, unfortunately, on January 1st, Things did not get 100% better. I think we all knew that, that it wasn't going to just go away. So yeah, we're, we're going to look at dating trends with a COVID viewpoint here. And, you know, we'll do like a mix of predictions for still pre-vaccine and then post-vaccine, because I yeah. think those will be very different trends. But we'll we'll take account into, you know, all of those situations. But Julie and I are coming off of high because we just saw each other at the park <laughs> yeah. after not seeing each other for a really long six time. Six weeks. Yeah. Six weeks? At least because I left six weeks ago. So maybe even longer. Longer. I think it's been two really months long. probably yeah probably like it's been months. a really long time and it <laughs> just happened to be a gorgeous day in san francisco we sat out in the park super safe with our masks on just so <laughs> that's on the record but it was really nice to see each other and just shoot the shit i forget what it's like to just shoot the shit with someone it's hard to do over video because you don't like <sighs> over video you're just staring at each other and it's not like oh did you hear about so and so because it doesn't you feel like you have to fill in that yeah. that you know dead air but in person you can have just silence and then be like oh i just remember this yep and you know we didn't talk about our baby dateable once no oh my gosh we (laughs) forgot about our baby we did we did talk about janice getting her sweatshirt that was the one thing that did come up but yes we did not talk about our baby but like any healthy relationship sometimes you got to put yourself first right (laughs) I know we left our baby starving. That's okay. Just for one day. (laughs) For the sake of our own relationship, we need a quality time together. How hot did Janice look in our sweatshirt? Oh, so hot. We've been getting a supermodel. The reason why Janice came up, Janice, we know you're listening, but the reason you came up is we were with um, a couple other friends too. And one of them was like, whoever was rocking that, like, because she didn't know who Janice, she's like, whoever was rocking that sweatshirt on your Instagram and really sold that so socially distant yet emotionally available one and I want to get one now so (laughs) and that's saying a lot to sell a sweatshirt she made that sweatshirt look good hot (laughs) and it is a fact that Jan has let me know this is her first sweatshirt she's ever owned i'm like girl where have you been it's covid (laughs) this i have a whole closet of sweatshirts now i know i'm i'm really tempted to buy myself one of those i feel like that thing looked really comfortable and really nice so it's a hoodie that's why it's super cozy and the colors are really great yeah thanks for modeling that for us yeah (laughs) i mean shameless plug again for our merch store but definitely get on it we're gonna do this thing that you know every so often we'll keep some of like the tried and true designs that mm-hmm. really are like the ones that everyone really loves. But we're going to rotate new stuff in and out. And we're also 
also going to do a crowdsourced experiment. We got this idea. We'll th- yep. uh, give a credit to Jasmine, one of our members. Yes. She had this idea to like crowdsource, uh, you know, like merch slogans because there's been so many great ones like master dating or, uh, you know, like I, I, I'll give us credit for Zooty calls because we used it in. <laughs> Actually, no, it came from Xander. a happy hour. It came from a Xander. happy hour. So there was a request to throw um, Zooty calls on merch. So we're going to do a crowdsourced kind of like who could come up with the best slogan and they'll win some sort of merch and it will also be available for everyone else to get on it too. I never thought (laughs) that we would become t-shirt designers, but I think (laughs) this is our eighth job with with dateable it's really cool because it helps because we're i think we're both creative people and now we get to exercise that part of our brain and julie's impeccable with design because she is a designer by trade (laughs) so we have these wonderful designs up on the merch store definitely check that out if you haven't yet yep datablepodcast.com slash shop Oh, that's our own plug. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) And another plug that we'll do is sounding board. We've had so many amazing, I mean, the group is growing. Like it was, yeah, uh, it's been wonderful to see everyone. Like we've been getting a lot of the people that have been regulars in the love in the love in the time of Corona group, which is the free group. So I think there has been a little bit of confusion. The free group look um, for love in the time of Corona. You still do need to kind of like tell us who you are so we don't let total randos yes. in but then the sounding board is really where things take it up uh, take it up a notch we have the dateable after show with we had logan yuri who is the director Incredible. of relationship science at hinge like she's writing a book that's coming out we're gonna have her back on the podcast so mm-hmm. get ready for that but i was thinking about it after and i'm like you a you and i take this for granted like how many cool people we're able to talk to like mm-hmm. through this podcast but i'm like this is pretty freaking cool that like people were able to like interact with someone like logan in this like intimate setting like where else can you do stuff like that so mm-hmm. we have of Dr. Abigail Lev this month coming up, which is going to be amazing. So every, I think it was our top performing episode. It was um, how you're wired for relationships, all about schemas. So again, like who can like? It's such an amazing opportunity to be with these people of such high caliber. And also, we just launched this event we're going to do in February. It's going to be called the Most Dateable Competition mm-hmm. for 2021. <laughs> it's what I hate using the word pageant, but we couldn't think of a better word. Uh, Basically, it's a co-ed competition. You'll go through rounds, including talent and Q&A, where we will crown one person as most dateable for 2021. So you have to be in our Facebook group in order to see all the details and to submit your video. But we are making decisions by the end of January of our six candidates that will go on to compete in the final round. Oh, so exciting. And that's going to be our February mu- event for the sounding board members. So if you're a sounding board member, um, we have two tiers that go to events for them, like it'll be free. And then for everyone that's at the friends level, we'll like have some sort of upgrade that's cheaper still than if you were to buy tickets mm-hmm. as a one off. So if you've been kind of considering sounding board, this could be a good intro to an event. But also if you're like, um, I'm basically ready to go, you'll you'll be getting a better deal if you actually Actually just join the sounding board. So again, mm-hmm. datablepodcast.com slash sounding board, giving you all the URLs or just go to datablepodcast.com. It's all there. <laughs> what I love about this group is something my idol Tim Ferriss has said. I know it, I, it sounds so douchey to say Tim Ferriss is my idol, but he really is. I thought May Lee was your idol. May, May Lee is my, yes, yeah, she, she is who I want to be. Tim Ferriss is like the voice I have in my head all the time. And he says this and it's just, I think it's so compelling. He says, spend your life talking to people who get it instead of mm-hmm. trying to convince people who don't get it. So oh that's God, why I, I love, love our community is because everyone gets gets it. If you get in the group, you look at the discussions, you're like, these are my peeps. I don't need to explain who I am. It's like people just get it. That's why I love this group. I know. Now it's like holding me to too high of a standard when I meet people that aren't (laughs) at this. Like emotional IQ is a word we hear all the time or EQ. I feel like now when I meet people that aren't at the same level as our people in the love and the time of Corona and sounding board, I'm like, can you just be like them? 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or just join our group and get influenced. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's basically what it is. I love that UA, you were talking about like a, a movie that you were watching and you're like, it kind of, what was it? Like the sex club? Oh, and you're like, <laughs> no, no, the vow on HBO Max. Oh, people are going to judge me. The vow, you know, the, the vow, it's a documentary about that sex club. It's Nexium. It, it started <laughs> as a leadership development program kind of like landmark you know oh, reminds yeah. me of like tony robbins as well so you get so the way they get you which is i think it's legit is that they help you get over your limiting beliefs <laughs> and they help you really accept yourself to move forward and reach your full potential i was like this is the same shit we talk about in the sounding board except the sex part we we don't yep, do a sex call do <laughs> we haven't we haven't explored that part of our business yet we just got to merch but maybe sex cult will be next <laughs> I don't Predictions know for 2022. <laughs> Dateable starts a sex call. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> we'll be like a, a like a COVID pod sex cult. You know, we got we got to like quarantine together, but then we just freely have sex with each other. It's yep. not a Did bad idea. Did you know idea. there's a name for these? They're called fuck pods. I didn't know yeah. this. I didn't know yeah. this. Only Tiffany Haddish uh, had to tell us all about that in that um, Netflix special. That would Yearly yeah. Beloved. Or Departed. Yearly oh, Departed. Yearly Departed. Oops. No one be loved no, this no, year. No, no, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a great, a great special. Thanks for turning me <laughs> onto that, Julie. It's a, it's a special on Netflix where seven comedians get up and it, it's the scene is like at a funeral and yep. they're saying goodbye to one thing from 2020. And it's just yep. hilarious. It's like it's a so week. Good. It's so funny. But yeah, Tiffany Haddish's was casual sex. And <laughs> she's basically like, and now I found myself in a relationship. <laughs> so good. It was so no. good. But we won't give it all away. You guys should check it out. But yeah, sex, out. sex pods. And one of the one of the people was like, Am I, should I be insulted that I haven't been invited to any sex pods? <laughs> and this one girl's like, I'm in like two. And, and they're, they're like, that's, that's not, not the not point. How it works. <laughs> I'm sorry for anyone who hasn't watched it. You're probably like, what the fuck are they talking about? This makes no sense. <laughs> or if you are at a sex pod, please reach out because we'd love to have you on yeah. the podcast next season. We should try to find someone. I'd love to talk about yes. sex pods. <laughs> in all seriousness we know we've gotten feedback from some people that they want more sex topics so mm. like let's hear them like who has some good ones like we've gone to virtual sex parties we've done real life sex parties but like sex pods like maybe there's some other stuff out there like let's let's hear it from you all it's not a bad idea i'm telling you it's not sex a bad cults. idea yeah sex cult sex pod <laughs> tomato tomato <laughs> But we will be talking about sex in our predictions. We're gonna we're gonna kick them off right now. We have five main ones. Of course, there are other predictions we made. Before we get into our predictions, here's a message from our sponsor, Magic Spoon. I really love that the current trend is all about healthy eating, but I have to admit, cutting down on carbs and sugar has been especially difficult for me. So when I heard about a cereal with zero sugar, 11 grams of protein, and only three net grams of carbs in each serving, I was like, ah, sold. Y'all, this is not magic. This is Magic Spoon, a line of delicious delicious tasting cereal that is almost too good to be true. I've already given out like five boxes to different friends because I'm like, please try you this. You can't stop talking about it. I can't stop. <laughs> Even today, right? I was like trying to sell it to our friend because there are four <laughs> yummy flavors, cocoa, fruity, frosted, and blueberry. It's all keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, low carb, GMO free, and frankly, guilt free. I'm currently loving the blueberry flavor because it tastes like a summer day after the rain. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I know that you guys want to get on this. So go to magicspoon.com slash dateable to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use our promo code dateable at checkout to save $5 off your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product. It's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money. No questions asked. Again, that's magicspoon.com slash dateable for $5 off. This episode is also brought to you by BetterHelp, our sponsor. For the new year, what are some things that you'd like to change in your life to find more happiness maybe? Or what do you think is preventing you from achieving your goals? The simple answer is prioritizing your mental health. 
We at Dateable are huge fans of therapy, and BetterHelp can match you with your own licensed therapist and connect you in a safe and private online environment. I was able to start communicating with my therapist in less than 48 hours. With BetterHelp, they're committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, and it's more affordable than traditional offline counseling. Their licensed professionals specialize in everything from New Year resolutions and stress, anxiety, trauma, depression, and grief. And for the new year, we wish for all of you to live your happy life. That's why as a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash dateable. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp spelled H-E-L-P dot com slash D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E. Again, this is no magic eight ball. It's just seeing all the behaviors and patterns from Mm -hmm. the previous year. We think this is the aftermath of 2020 and what dating will be like in 2021 in the context of vaccine and post-vaccine. So pre and post. So let's start with the first one. This is... This is just such a normal prediction. It's like a given. Video dates will become a normal thing. It's it's part of the process. Before you just message online and then you meet up in person. Now there's like another step of video. Mm -hmm. And think before people were very shy about video and now it's become a norm that it's part of the process of dating now. I mean, I love it. I actually (laughs) like started off being like, I don't know, because I had some like earlier video dates that I just felt like they felt so awkward. Right. And I'm like, I don't want to like, you know, we had this whole discussion. I remember asking you like, hey, like didn't feel great about it on video, but like maybe it's video, like it's the medium. It was just hard to tell. But I've actually had some that have had a lot of like chemistry through video. And I think it's totally possible. Like, yeah, it's not going to be fireworks per se. Like, it's not like you can have that physical touch and all that. But I think you can really gauge if there's something there. And then it just makes you a lot more excited to meet up in real life. And I think that's what mm-hmm. was missing for modern dating is that it, everyone was so like disposable and expendable. Yeah. And like, yeah. I know I was guilty of it at some point that like I was like, I don't even need to save this person's name like in my phone. Like I may never see them again. Like what's the point of even doing it? And that is a terrible attitude. Like I would much rather have less dates, but go in excited about who I'm actually meeting. It just means that IRL dates will become more coveted. So you, there's a mm-hmm. ramp up up to meeting up in person and video is part of that ramp up so that you meet with fewer people in real life but those people are the ones you're really excited about i also love that most people ha- now have a ring light and yes. like an external microphone like everyone has their virtual video date <laughs> thing down they're like oh i need this background totally and this angle <laughs> I'm like, I think I'm so much more comfortable with it now, too, than I was like before, like video in general. But I think everyone's getting there. Like, it's definitely like, I don't know, for work, too, like people in their work lives, like I know for us podcasts, we have to do it video. But even like just like office jobs, like video is the norm. It's It's, It's a thing. Um, But yeah, I think it's a good thing. Because I don't know if this is on yearly departed too. I've just been watching too much Netflix because I've been at my parents' (laughs) house for six weeks but I'm back now obviously but I heard like it was something I was watching they're like who has time to put on makeup put get dressed like go across town to like meet someone that could be a total dud and it's true it's like there's so much time and that's what gets people burnt out on dating is when Mm -hmm. they kind of keep churning one after another and things don't ever seem to work out so I would so much rather you know like with zoom you can put on virtual makeup but even exactly even just putting like bare ba- makeup on and like getting dressed from the waist up is a <laughs> heck load easier right <laughs> Yeah, you don't have to account for the time, the commute time of getting there. You don't have to worry about how you smell like it's just so much easier to do virtual (laughs) dates. And I also feel like if those people who are reluctant to do video dates are going to have less dates in 2021. I really do believe that. Totally. Or even the good old fashioned phone. Like there's something about even starting there, then you don't have to get ready at all. It's wonderful. And then if there's chemistry there, then you can upgrade it to a video date. But I think what I'm starting to see in 2021, now that we're at the very start, is that people don't want to do like endless video dates anymore. Right, right. I think it's like, let's do one, let's screen, let's see if this is like has some potential. And if so, then let's meet up. We're not going to meet up 
with every last person, but we're not going to spend our lives on video either. Like, I think it's like even, okay, like San Francisco and LA are like probably the most extreme that nothing's open. But even there in those places, like you can still go to a park or do something. Mm -hmm. And I think in other places, although I will say other places have weather not working for them. Yeah. Like California might be shut down right now, but we have weather in our favor that makes it a lot easier to do stuff. So maybe people in like, like places that are cold might do more video dates to like at least see if it's worth taking that risk to meet someone like in an indoor capacity. Yeah, it's way safer. And speaking of safety, shall we go on to our second prediction? Yeah, let's do it. Safety first. Come safety on. Safety first. That's what <laughs> Datable is all about. Safety kids. <laughs> Vaccination. Oh, yes. Badges on online dating profiles. We've already seen them with the uh, political badges. Now we think there's going to be testing badges. Have I been vaccinated? Am I going to get vaccinated? And this will become very polarizing and political and people will condemn each other for whatever mm-hmm. they choose. But at least for whatever you choice you do make with a vaccination, you will feel very strongly about it. You can't be like middle of the road for something like this. No. You can't be like, eh, it could go either way. If someone sticks a needle in my body whatever i get vaccinated it's not you have to make a conscious choice absolutely and i think like i mean yeah i think people are gonna put it in their profile for sure mm-hmm. like i think they will come out like who knows maybe there will be a badge like i can mm-hmm. see like bumble had like what type of date are you comfortable with like video versus mm. socially distant so i could definitely see a badge being created but i think people are gonna like spell it out or yeah. it's gonna be a very early conversation starter for sure because i think that really ch- i mean there's a lot in terms of just like the safety and comfort, but also just like how you view the world and like what there's a lot that's interesting there. Well, this whole testing and vaccination movement will open up this entire like testing sort of mentality. So mm-hmm. people are going to get tested for STIs are going to be tested for this, this and that because they want they, it's nice having the power to know your results. And I think that's what like the COVID testing has trained us to do is wanting to know what is happening in our body. Yeah. So we also put up a poll, like a question and poll in our Facebook group, in addition to uh, UA and I coming up with our predictions. And Alexa also wrote, daters will take STI testing more seriously because they realize the power of testing and the power of knowing these results. So I think a lot of people are thinking that way for sure. Yeah, it's good to know, right? You want to know either way. And now personal safety is it's a priority. We know that now. And with COVID, you realize you start seeing your your consequences. Now yep. you know it's contagious and you know your health can impact someone else's health. Yeah, I mean, I think also just like for like I've experienced this recently that I'm like, I could do a socially distanced date, but I feel like there is still like an awkwardness to it. Like you're not really able to do some of like the touching and like the stuff that you would do before and the signals that you would send that way. So I feel like having the test could at least put you at ease to kind of, you know, be Mm -hmm. able to act more like you did in pre COVID times when the vaccine even more to that. And it shows that you care about the other person that you're going on the date with, totally. right? It's a sign of respect, I really think. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then our our third prediction, yeah? Shall yeah, we move let's on? move on. So meeting people online that's not through these dating apps. I know everyone's still on the apps, but I think through quarantine, people have noticed there are many other ways to meet people Mm -hmm. that could turn into romantic relationships that aren't branded as dating. Yep. I think this one is a big one. And we actually said this in our earlier predictions, Mm -hmm. or we did it on the episode with Jordana Abraham about like just dating in general. I think it was on our earlier predictions too, but we talked about how like apps would start to like simulate real life a bit more, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think we have seen that, especially now where virtual is the way of life. Like we've seen it in our Facebook group. I think that's been one of the most, you know, like doing the weekly happy hours and like having a way that one of our members, I forget who said this, was like, it's like, you know, like Coachella online because you could like jump around oh, to different like rooms. Yeah, it's like 
might not go that far, but yes, like there is like there, it was kind of like a house party that you could like jump into different rooms and, you know, like it felt like that. And we, I mean, we, we talked to a few people on episodes last year. Like we mm-hmm. had Kathin who talked about meeting someone on Clubhouse, which is an app that's really blowing up. That's like people discussing. And apparently uh, one girl like put herself in a room and was like, who wants to date me? And people could like come in. It was it's incredible. So, yeah. It's audio only. Audio only. But people are using it for dating, which is incredible. And then TikTok, we had um, our couple that met through TikTok, the mm-hmm. r- r- start of season 11. So people are definitely using this. I mean, people have always kind of crept into DMs on Facebook and, and Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. But I think it's even more now because dating apps are not for everyone. I, I personally still think they are a great way to meet people you would not have. But I get that there's a lot of, you know, it's like this there is a toxic side that really drains certain people. Mm-hmm. And I can see why people don't want to like put themselves out there too as like a personal ad. Like I think it is a different people have different comfort with it. But at the reality is it's very difficult to meet people in real life. And it probably is going to be through 2021. Like even with the vaccine coming out, I can't imagine people like coming up and being in each other's faces as much with strangers mm-hmm. and like being like super like seductive with people they've never met. It just doesn't feel like that's going to happen anytime soon. So I do think that we're going to start to like find more and more of these avenues that feel like real life that are online. And it's a relief to know that online dating is not the end all be all to meet people It's just one avenue. Mm -hmm. And you got to diversify your portfolio. You know what I mean? (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. I mean, I think people have said people have always said it's good to meet people that have similar interests to you. Yeah. So I think more interest-based groups are going to start to pop up, like meet, like kind of like meet up, but like online more. Mm-hmm. And I mean, meet up, I think has always been one of those things that people say is a good idea, but in theory, it like doesn't translate as well. But I think with technology, like you can actually like start to filter people with similar values and interests and like do other things than just kind of a random, like let's all meet up with no background. Mm -hmm. And I think there could start to be like an explosion of apps that let people meet off common interests, but also other factors. It's all about community. And that's what yeah. <laughs> Nikki Nova, she predicted that for us too. It's yep. community. That's how you're going to grow your brand. And that's how you're going to grow your network too, if you're dating. So I really like that prediction. Before we get to number four and five, we're going to take a break for a message from our sponsor. Here's a special message from our sponsor, Gobble. Do you remember at the beginning of the pandemic when everyone was like super pumped about cooking and sharing their food photos, right? Remember that? And like a million months later, no one's posting their food photos anymore because we're all so freaking sick of cooking. I know at least for me, I just need variety in my meals and I can't accomplish that by just cooking on my own. That is why Gobble is the perfect meal delivery solution because you can whip up delicious and healthy meals in 15 minutes or less. Gobble and listen, arm of sous chefs that do the time consuming work for you. And we just tried the miso glazed salmon and it was divine. Everything comes with pre-portioned fresh ingredients such as already chopped veggies, spice blends, and perfectly simmer sauces. Just pick meals from Gobble's extensive menu each week, including a variety of flavors, classic dishes, global recipes, and delicious vegetarian options, plus a line of lean and clean recipes featuring low calorie and low carb options. And by the way, they also have breakfast and desserts. Yeah, that's right. See what a difference gobble will make for your household they're offering our listeners this fantastic limited time deal for six meals for just 36 dollars plus free shipping that's dinner for two people for three nights all for just 36 bucks an offer only available through gobble.com slash datable get the special offer now by going to gobble.com slash d-a-t-e-a-b-l-e for six meals 36 bucks Now, the holidays are the perfect time to get a little bit more glammed up, even if you're attending more virtual parties than past years. Thrive Cosmetics, yes, cosmetics instead of cosmetics, is one of our favorite beauty brands that we discovered this year. Their products are high performance, award-winning, and are both vegan and cruelty-free. The clinically proven formulas highlight your best features and improve your skin over time. 
our go-to, and Julie, I know you love this one, is the award-winning mascara called Liquid Lash Extensions. So good. And I don't know about anybody else, but I have not been able to get my lash extensions this year because of COVID. And this product makes my lashes so long, I've been asked if I'm wearing extensions. This flake-free, smudge-free, and clump-free product has more than 7,000 five-star reviews and won Glamour's Best Clean Beauty Product of 2020 award for the best mascara. And now a lot of their holiday sets include Include a free tube of this mascara. Plus, for every product you buy, they donate to help a woman thrive. Yes, that's where the cosmetics come from. Start thriving and help women in need today by going to thrivecosmetics.com slash datable for 15% off your first purchase. That's thrive, C-A-U-S-E medics.com slash D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E for 15% off. Awesome. So let's get into those predictions. So number four, we think that hookup culture is coming back. <laughs> yes. We had said, Unfortunately. I, I know. In 2020, we said hookup culture has gone away. But I, th- we think that, you know, people have had a lot of pent up sexual energy. Oh my God. Too much. Like a lot. And... <laughs> I don't think it will come back like immediately. I think it will be post vaccine. So probably like the Mm -hmm. later part of the year. But I do think people are going to be, you know, a little more, especially if they are kind of discerning the dates a little more on video to begin with. I think that sex is going to happen in those early dates because people quite frankly need the physical intimacy and touch but it will no i i feel like with the hookup culture it won't be blurred lines it will be very clear when to hook up in fact i think people will be like you know i'm just in this for hooking up or i just i really just want to have sex which is kind of nice there are no mixed signals because everyone's sort of like wanting that affection so why not just put it out there Yeah. Or even if it does blossom into a relationship, I think just sex will be on the table way earlier because of that. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, there was I think people I mean, I agree with this. There was someone in our group. uh, We're gonna we'll we'll go through some of the group's predictions after but I'll sprinkle in a couple that are relevant. There was one about I mean, one person said like roaring 20s style dating, Uh which I feel like we've been saying this for a while. So that came from Sukanya. Um, But there was one about fuck boys that I want to read. Oh, because you know, I love talking about fuck boys. You think they'll be back, Julie? Are they? Um, is making a I comeback. actually totally agree with what Aaron put up here okay. is that all the fuck boys are going to come going to come out in full show this summer thinking they have the best summer ever. But after over a year of lockdown uh, away from them, women will walk the other way. Ooh, and I agree. I think pe- like fuck boys are going to back when there's a vaccine they'll be like yep i can just come into people's lives and have casual sex and do whatever but i do think that like the work that we've all done isn't going to just magically disappear so i totally agree with that and i think like with this whole hookup culture coming back in it hookup culture gets a bad rep like we always think like a negative to that and i do think though it doesn't need to be a negative like if both people are on board and people are more like upfront about their feelings early on whether it's for casual sex or that they're just ready to like take the plunge into something it doesn't Mm. have to be a bad thing i don't think I don't I don't actually think the fuck boys will come back in full force. I f- I feel like because we've been self-isolating for so long that a lot of these fuck boys have been doing a lot of internal work mm. and they're realizing I'm only saying this because I've talked to two fuck boys <laughs> during this this time to be like how are you doing how are you feeling and they had feelings they Whoa. honestly had feelings and one guy admitted to me he's like I realize I'm just really lonely that's why yeah. I, I'm desperate for this kind of you know cat and mouse chase all the time but he he feels like he is seeing dating a little differently because he's mm-hmm. connecting more with his feelings. I'm not saying all fuck boys have gone through this transformation, <laughs> but I think having that time of self-isolation yep. has helped a lot of them evolve. I do actually think that people are still going to be relationship minded, even if a hookup culture is back in the picture, because I agree. I think the loneliness that a lot of people have felt have sh- like shed a light on the importance of relationships. Mm-hmm. And I think that like, 
I think things will just move faster, like in a, with physical. Like I think things mm. are moving fast now, but not with the physical side always. And I think that will just kind of start to catch up and come into that picture a bit more. Well, that's a very nice way to transition to our last <laughs> trend prediction for 2021, right? Yeah. Um, basically, that signals are totally changing. Right? Totally. <laughs> totally. It used to just be like three drinks and some leg touching for me. And I'm like, yeah. I know. (laughs) I know. It's like, it's also, I feel like on video dates, like it's really hard to know how things are vibing because there's no signal at all with touch. So I think it's really, we're going to have to work on our verbal skills more. I think it's really nice when someone can just say on a video or even a text after like how good a time they had, how excited they are to meet you, whatever that may be. Like, I think we do need to rely on verbal, which has been missing from dating. People are always Mm -hmm. scared to say how they feel and put it out there and they play dumb games. And I think it could be a good thing that we have to rely on other senses a little more. It's such an unprecedented time that people can't rely on those like douchey pickup artists to be like, oh, if he or she does this, it means they're interested, right? Because we've never been in this predicament before. So now we actually have to communicate with consent. And, And also, you know, a lot of this is we haven't seen people's mouths in so long in person that even seeing a mouth close up (laughs) <laughs> in yeah. real life is going to be a little shocking for some people. I think what I've heard from some of my friends who are dating again, they're like, I feel like I'm dating from scratch right now. Yeah. I'm learning everything from scratch. I know. Like gone are the days when someone just goes in for the kill. And like, ha- like, I can't even imagine if someone did that now without asking. Oh my gosh. You would be like, hell no. <laughs> Get away. What are you doing? Yeah. Um, I went to get like a to go drink, uh, because that's all that's open. And this guy like got really in my, mine in my friend's face. And I was like, this was so inappropriate. Like he was interacting like you used to do back in the day. And I'm like, no, you've missed the memo here that you just can't do that anymore. Oh, no. Like I don't want someone touching me. I don't want, like, especially if we have no, like we haven't had any like dates or any rapport, like just someone random. Them on, at a bar like that is no. not gonna happen anymore no get away from me i can't even stand to be i, I can't even watch those scenes in, no when people are too close together i'm like oh my god this person's just spitting on that other person's face i mean i think bars and clubs and all that stuff i mean we can go into a whole other rant on that so we'll save that for another day but i think those are going to look very very different than they are today as yes. well. And maybe in 2022, it will come back. But I don't think 2021 will have the same like social um, interactions and venues that we once did. Yeah. And I think just how we explained that the in real life dates will be the coveted date and with the ramp up. I think it's the same with the kiss. I think Mm -hmm. there's just going to be a lot of ramp up to that first kiss because you got to have a conversation first. Yeah. You quarantine. Who have you seen? Are you seeing other people? Have you been physical with them? These are conversations you got to like check the boxes before you go tongue to tongue with someone. Or even request a test. Like there's like a lot of things that you could do that would make, I mean, testing is never 100%, but it's still going to give you a better sense than if you have nothing at all. I'd feel more comfortable. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's it. That's our top five predictions for 2021. I feel pretty good about this list. Of course, yeah. you know, just like 2020, there were a lot of surprises along the way. So who knows? I don't know who what knows? else is going to happen. <laughs> I know. We're like, oh, yeah, we got it because we know where we're coming from. But who nope. really knows? Nope. In 2020, you know, that whole like 2020 vision, we got this. And then everyone's oh, like, oh, my God, 2020 yeah, vision. <laughs> Fuck that. Should we read some of the predictions? Yeah, people let's posted? read some of them. We had some really good ones. We were able to kind of put some of them in, but I thought this one was interesting and I could totally see this from Nicolay. Um, COVID engagements break up. And then there were some comments on this one, basically how, you know, a lot of people have been entering relationships because of loneliness and they may realize when the vaccine comes or, you know, we're out of this that 
they don't necessarily really love this person or like them. They're just did it mm. out of convenience. So hopefully that doesn't happen to people, but I could see like, I mean, I think there'll be some that aren't and some that are just like any other breakup. Well, I think back in the day when people enter relationships, we called it the Sunday test. Could you spend mm-hmm. a whole Sunday with this person doing nothing? But now people are entering relationships with a quarantine test. Could I imagine quarantining with this person for months? Yeah. And that's a much higher hurdle to to get over. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that he's saying the opposite, though, almost like that they've been, you know, now when things open up again, there's going to be all this temptation and you're going to look at your partner and be like, did I really want to Did be I with want this? this? But I also see what you're saying that like it could actually be a much like stronger foundation. I think it really comes down to like how much are you using dating to fill a void? Are mm. you using it like because you're just lonely and you need anyone or you're using it like the quarantine test? Like I'm going to be super selective with who I let in. And those ones will probably be the ones that last. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, what about this one? I think uh, Yen said, I think once people are vaccinated, there'll be a lot of away dates to get out of mm-hmm. town. No more like uh, Netflix and chill at home. I'm conflicted about this one because now I realize I'm I'm such a homebody oh, yeah. more than yeah. before. So a perfect date for me now is no longer adventuring in Peru. A perfect date for me is... Being at home, selecting a movie, drinking a nice bottle of wine. Julie, by the way, I started drinking wine, which is what? Yui Ooh. drinks wine now? It's it's a big leap for me. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so that I, I don't know. I'm conflicted about that one. Don't you want to go to wine country? Don't you want to get out of the house? Like no. I think <laughs> I, I don't. Okay, so i conf- I agree. I have never been a homebody. I've never described myself that way, but over this time I have not really minded that aspect that much. And I'm like, wait, maybe I am more introverted than I ever thought. But that being said, I was like with uh, my friend and she like literally threw out like the worst dive bar in San Francisco. She's like, oh my God, the what bus stop. <laughs> And let's just mind you that before COVID, we're like, we would never be caught dead at the bus stop. She's like, what I would give to go to the bus stop right now. And I'm like, that I think sums it up because I think about it all the time. I'm like, what would I give to just be at like a bar touching and like interacting with a date the way I used to back in the day? I do want to go out. Like, I do want to do all this stuff. So I see where Yen's coming from on this one. Can we just paint the picture for bus stop? Because I feel like every city has a bus <laughs> yes, stop. And do. the fact that it's called the bus stop, you already <laughs> kind of get a sense of how janky this place is. Because it's supposed to be like a place you don't stay so the whole bad. night. You're just there to wait for your bus to go to the next place. But the bus stop is a place where you go and your feet are immediately stuck to the ground. So one, you know, it's dirty <laughs> as fuck. And my first experience, my first and only experience at bus stop was I caught two like 20 some year olds doing lines Dude, of coke. Coke. In the back, yeah, I knew you were going to say that. the bathroom, <laughs> and then coming out, be like, how come he didn't text me back? And then the other girl was like, go do more Coke. And so they went back and did more Coke. Okay, I was like, awesome, good for you. And then the third aspect of bus stop is nobody ever goes, hey, what are you doing tonight? Do you want to go to bus stop? It's not like you, no. it's not a product. You're not like planning your night around bus stop. You're just like, you're drunk. You are desperate. You're horny. And you go, where should we go? Uh, bus stop. <laughs> yep. Hey, you know what? That sounded pretty damn good to me, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I really, I really have zero desire to ever go to the bus stop. But I would love, I would love to take a trip right now. I think also mm. just like that I miss. Like, I think, I don't know. I mean, I think you can do that even in COVID world. Like you can do wine tasting and do that. But just because it's always, it's much more of a hassle. Like I yeah. think, okay, we're like going a little on a tangent here, but I think this is a good one. But I think even if the vaccine, let's say, God forbid, it gets delayed and people like, like, like we do spend all of 2021 similar. I think people are craving to do stuff. And I think that's why you've seen like an in- mm. uptick in like road trips and going to national parks and doing stuff. And I do think that's going to continue. I think just being at your house 24 seven is really wearing at people's mental health. Mm. I agree that people are going to want to be on the move, but maybe to each their own, like you were saying. But then you look at the housing market because, you know, Julie, you know, I'm like, 
on the market for a house or whatever. And they're saying millennials are buying more single family homes now because they want the yard, they want the private space. True. Thinking that they're going to be homebodies for a long time. I do wonder once the vaccine is out, will they regret their <laughs> purchase decisions of buying these single family homes? I totally do that. <laughs> I was talking to my mom about that and she's like, the home prices in our like suburban town have been like, like it's been so hard to get a house. And yes. I'm like, do you really think these people want to be there when things open up again? Like, no. yeah, cities suck right now because nothing that is there for a city. I mean, I don't even want to say that because I do think there's actually still a lot you can do in a city. Like, our dining was pretty fin- phenomenal when it was happening. Yeah. But I, what draws people to cities, once that's available again, I think people will crave people it. People will go back, right? And then there will be all these yeah. like uh, foreclosed homes in the suburbs because people just don't want to pay for them anymore. That's what I think. Chris <laughs> says, I'm thinking people might get used to dating from a distance and take more mm-hmm. time to meet up in person. Yeah. Yep, that's what we pretty much talked about as well. I like this one from Alenzia. People aren't going to be as superficial yeah. when it comes to seeking their friend for the end of the world. Yes. Woo. Amen to that. Well, I love this quarantine test. I think people should make sure that they apply that because I think that will really go back to what um, was said at the beginning of like be entering something out of loneliness. Like if you mm-hmm. look at it, it's almost like empowering in a way to be single right now if you're not feeling like that dread of loneliness because you're like I got this and anyone that comes into my life is an added benefit Mm -hmm. and I think if you can do that and you're like I can spend day in day out with this person doing nothing even when things are available and make the mundane shit fun then that's really a good sign of someone to enter a relationship with. As someone who has survived a quarantine relationship I gotta tell you I never thought about a relationship as taking care of someone else. I always thought it was just mutual life for each other and you have fun and do things together, a companion, an activity partner. But this has been eye-opening for our relationship where I've had to take into account someone else to take care of, not to just think about them. It's like Mm -hmm. to take care of them and do meal planning and to think, oh, are we missing toilet paper at the home? Those are like not fun things to do, but you got to do when you are in a relationship. Right, right. So there, (laughs) are you, (laughs) relationships, do you really want one? (laughs) Question. (laughs) Hey, that is a million dollar question. I mean, I think like sometimes I'm like, I would love to have that. And I've had like kind of a few things in this time, but I feel like sometimes I'm like, I really do crave that connection again. Mm. And then other times I'm like... I actually don't mind kind of being on my own path. Yeah. Like beat to your own drum. So it comes in waves for me. I think the right person, though, that can survive the quarantine test, then it's definitely a more added value. Yes. I like that. Cool. All right. We're going to wrap up this episode again. If you like to participate or even watch our most dateable 2021 competition, join our Facebook group, Love in the Time of Corona. We're taking applications until uh, mid-January. And we'll be making decisions on the final candidates by the end of January. What is the cutoff day? One thirteen. One thirteen. But you know what? Depending on when you listen to this episode, if you happen to join after one thirteen and you're still interested, there's still some time. Okay. Okay. Maybe one fifteen will <laughs> be the one- ultimate cutoff day. Because <laughs> now everyone's gonna be like, "Wait, I'm gonna submit my dad." One fifteen is our ultimate cutoff Fine. date, but Fine. it's gonna All be right. great. It's gonna be great. <laughs> And the winner of the most dateable 2021 competition will win all kinds of swag and possibly a guest spot on our podcast. So there there are a lot of upsides to this competition Mm -hmm. and you get exposed to our entire community and you never know who's out there. You never know. You never know. All right. If you love us and because we love you, please give us a good rating in Apple Podcasts. We really appreciate those. We're up to 400 reviews now. Good for us. I know. Amazing. And like we have some really phenomenal guests in store for season 12. I still can't believe we're on season 12. It just feels like. (laughs) Yeah. How did that happen? We're almost like 300 episodes. It's crazy. But I think. uh, (laughs) But anyways, that helps us get these guests because they look at 
at it. They see that we're legit. It helps us rise to the charts. This year, we were able to get to number four was our peak position on relationships. We were like after Brene Brown and Michelle Obama. I'm like, I think Lucky we, sc- then. we screenshotted it because we're like, this is, I, I don't even know what to say. I'm definitely going to like hang it up in a poster in my room. As you should. <laughs> Laminate yeah. that shit. Frame it. Let's frame Let's, it. Even for one hour, if that's the case, like oh. that's. That's something to memorialize for sure. Help us get to number one so we are ahead of them. That would be yeah. a lifelong dream. Yeah, because then we can get them as guests on our show. We're like, yeah. oh, don't you want to be on the right. best podcast? Right. <laughs> don't you see that we're number one? No. <laughs> but yes, it does help. So thank you for everyone that's done that already. It makes such a difference to us. All right. We're going to wrap this up as we do always. Stay Stay dateable. dateable. The Dateable Podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. Want to continue the conversation? First, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter with the handle at Dateable Podcast. Tag us in any post with the hashtag stay dateable and trust us, we look at all of those posts. Then head over to our website, datablepodcast.com. There you'll find all the episodes as well as articles, videos, and our coaching service with vetted industry experts. You can also find our premium Y series where we dissect, analyze, and offer solutions to some of the most common dating conundrums. We're also downloadable for free on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Overcast, Stitcher Radio, and other podcast platforms. Your feedback is valuable to us, so don't forget to leave us a review. And most importantly, remember to stay dateable.